Uh, it is 7.02, we'll call to order the Board of Commission regular meeting April 19th, 2022 for South County Fire. Could have those at headquarters please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. We'll move on to approval of the agenda. We have a motion to approve. Commissioner Daniels, we have a second on the motion. Commissioner Teoflack, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Commissioner Rowland? I said aye. Okay, great. Hard to tell with everybody else going. Motion carries. Moving on to our consent agenda with items 4A through 4H, uh, including vacation requests, health care EFTs, claims vouchers, payroll summary, and apparatus replacement. Do we have a motion to approve? Commissioner T.O. Do we have a second on the motion? Commissioner Daniels, any discussion on the motion? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Moving on to approval of our meeting minutes for our April 5th regular session. A motion to approve. Commissioner Daniels, I have a second on the motion. Second. Commissioner Roland, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Moving on to public comments. Do we have anybody on the call wishing to make a public comment? Please use the raise your hand function and you'll be elevated to the meeting to provide any kind of comment. While we're waiting to see if anybody wishes to make comments, do we have any written comment or anything provided in advance, Melissa? Okay. Well, not seeing any. Move on to our fire chief report with Chief Hobus. Thank you, Chair Urban. Good evening, commissioners, staff, and meeting attendees. I'll do a brief update on COVID-19 for our county and the RFA. We've now had over 152,000 cases in Snohomish County as of April 18th. 24 patients are currently hospitalized, and two of those are on ventilators to help them breathe in local area county hospitals. Lori's going to be screen sharing our two-week rolling graphic. This goes back to January, 2021, a little bit of an uptick. And we've seen this throughout the month. Our case count is currently at 95 cases per 100,000 people. And this is through April 9th. Reminder commissioners, the 100 cases per 100,000 has been the metric uh, really since the start of the pandemic. Thanks, Lori. Uh, good news as well for a South County fire specific update. No change from the last reporting and our last two board meetings. So total incidents of employees off work due to COVID precautions, employee total positive count, as well as our uniformed employee vaccination percentage is staying solid for now a three week period. So that is great news. Uh, we're gonna look at our first watch graphic and this is the one week period since our last meeting through 4 p.m. today. Our call volume, and this is different than it has been for a number of meetings commissioners, has generally hovered slightly below or at our normally expected average with zero occurrences of call volume exceeding three times standard deviation. Lori's gonna to transition to that pie chart that we've been looking at for quite a while. And uh, that is also interesting matching up at a decrease. So same week over week comparing 2021 to 2022 for one of the first times this year, we've had a 5% decrease in our calls over the last week, 31% fewer incidences. Thanks, Lori. Our hospitals have started now again reporting data. We were at 998 for a long time. We've now had reported 1,014 confirmed COVID-19 positive patients since the start of the pandemic, which March thus far, a total of 17 transports to Providence and Swedish Edmonds. We're gonna to transition to a South County fire specific uh, updates and we'll, we'll end this fire chief's report by turning over an introduction to Chief Eastman. The commissioners, I wanna remind you of two of our free online one hour classes that help make our communities that we serve safer. 
And that's our act first aid, April 20th at 10 a.m. and April 20th at 6 p.m. So for those that aren't familiar with ACT that might make watching this, that is three life skills you can learn to save someone else's life in the crucial few minutes before firefighters arrive. So A is for antidote for opioids, CPR for cardiac arrest, and tourniquet for bleeding control. And then on April 27th at 6 p.m., we're going to teach an online child safety and CPR class. And every, everyone uh, will recall that unintentional injuries are a leading cause of death for children in our communities. And with that, we're going to talk about all American leadership. And Lori's going to be showing a graphic here that represents the 17 other fire agencies, along with South County Fire as the 18th, that'll be participating in the All American Leadership Fire Leadership Academy Class 006. This begins tomorrow and will continue over the next six months. Commissioners, you'll remember Class 005 included a number of uh, your staff to include your chief officers. We're going to send nine personnel, and it's going to be Fire Marshal Carl Fitterer, Battalion Chiefs James Curtis, Steve Ness, Todd Anderson, Captain Keith Sessions, Medical Service Officers Jay Ford and Deanna Herbert, Deputy Fire Marshal Chris Burt, and uh, the first non-uniform person that I'm aware of that's entered into this academy in the nation, our Chief Financial Officer Chris Bothwell. Congratulations to all of you and uh, CFO Bothwell for uh, entering into a new new adventure so this should be fun um, we're going to now go away from this graphic and we are going to talk about an important retirement coming up so uh, commissioners many of you have probably met or seen or recognized the picture of in these screens or especially the one in the upper right because uh, mr firefighter mike siegel became nationally famous when that picture was in the upper right was picked up by visa and shown on television including a, maybe a super bowl commercial but He's gonna be retiring with us on April 28th with an official retirement date of April 30th. Firefighter Siegel began volunteering with Fire District 11 in 1985 and started his professional career with District 11 in 88. So he has provided a total of 37 years of service to the residents of the RFA. Recently, he's been assigned to ladder 10 and he's been on the ladder for about 10 years, but it's at Keeler's Corner Fire Station 10. He's been part of the county's technical rescue team since 2002. He's been an acting captain. He served on the executive board of District 11's IFF Local 2781 during the time frame of the merger of District 1 and District 11. Mike's interest in the fire service started watching his father and two uncles who were with the Seattle Fire Department at the time. And the Siegel family legacy will continue at South County Fire in the years ahead as we hired his nephew, Colton Siegel, as one of our firefighters in 2021. So I wanna congratulate Firefighter Siegel on his upcoming and very well-deserved retirement. And we're now to the last item, the fire chief report that I'll turn over to Chief Eastman, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Um, commissioners, I have the privilege um, of introducing you to our new data analyst, um, Jennifer Pardee. Um, I've had the privilege of working for, with Jennifer for, God, it's been a long time, Jennifer. I think we started working with the countywide um, data standards team, um, and um, she did the majority of the work um, on behalf of uh, of that effort. And Commissioner Kenny, Commissioner Chan, um, my guess is you recognize Jennifer from the days of working with the shop in Monroe. Um, Jennifer um, actually started with Monroe District 3 in 2004. Um, she was part of the consolidation or the merger between District 3 and District 7, um, and then she was also still with District 7 when they brought on um, District 8. Um, and she, I think you, you um, late 2021 is when you um, um, resigned from your position there at Snohomish Regional. And we're fortunate enough to um, have brought her on with um, South County Fire. Um, her last roles from 2016 forward with Snohomish Regional was doing their data analytic work. Um, she worked closely with Chief Dorsey, um, another another person that we dealt with countywide, um, and was a was the, I mean they were principal in getting the county data where it is today. Um, and and I I'm going to give credit where credits due. There's a lot of work that I have done on behalf of South County um, that really the root work was the work that Jennifer had done on behalf of the countywide efforts we were working on, um, and. I'm not ashamed to say that we borrowed that work with her 
with her blessing and, and instituted a lot of that here at South County. Um, she did not let the grass grow. She's hit the ground running. Um, and, and I will tell you, she will be an asset. Um, and she will take this organization um, probably further than we thought that Dan Alice could take us. So with that, um, I introduced Jennifer and I know, I, I know she's a quiet person and probably doesn't want to say anything, but um, with that, um, um, I personally appreciate the fact that we went and, and brought this asset on board and um, um, we'll under promise, but I guarantee you she's going to over deliver. So with that, Jennifer, welcome to South County Fire. Commissioner Daniels. Met with uh, Kurt Mills, the executive director of Snow 911 today, and he had a ton of positive things to say about Jennifer. So welcome aboard. Commissioner Cham. Yeah, I'm looking forward for you because now they have no excuse now for the uh, uh, all the reports that I'm waiting for, uh, dashboard and any other thing. I hope you're, you're going to work with uh, CFO too, because that is critical for me as a data person. I, I really like to whatever, you know, tied to finance and data. So uh, in a sense, we are just, we have to justify to our taxpayer, uh, the money we spend. One of the, okay. one of the things, one of the things I didn't say, Commissioner Chan and, and is Jennifer had the privilege of working with um, Bill Cushman too. Um, okay. So she's, she's well versed in, in strategic modeling. Um, she, she, she got the same experience as I did um, building models and working through those, um, um, with Bill Cushman. So she's, she's, um, well versed in it and, and it stems from, and, and, you know, that this, the strategic forecast, um, that is in her warehouse. She did that for Monroe. She's done it for Snowmish Regional. Um, she's quite good at it. Um, and, and I see that, um, becoming part and, and we have a, we have a meeting planned with, um, CFO Boswell. We just haven't, Boswell, we just haven't, we just haven't connected dots yet, but we'll, we'll hear, um, in the weeks to come. If, if it's okay, if you don't mind, you're going to give, a, give us a resume or a little brief, your background so we can understand a little bit. Yeah, um, uh, primarily a lot of my background is having started back in 2004 with Monroe Fire. And when I was originally hired on there, one of the, my primary roles was definitely more in the finance realm. Um, that was a huge portion of what I did. And uh, we had the regional shop program. And so doing the ins and outs of that program and working behind the scenes with Chief Guptal and Chief Silva in all of the ins and outs. And then obviously we went through the merger with District 7 and that uh, kind of launched in a whole new direction because uh, you're, you know, I'm sure as you guys are very aware when you do mergers and you're melding two different organizations together, you're working through who goes where and um, just looking at the strong suits of everybody. And so that landed me in data analytics where I had always done it in the finance realm, but then it quickly morphed into operation side, boots on the street. We need better understanding of what's going on. And so launching that and working at the, the, at the county level, recognizing a lot of what we do is countywide. And so really making an effort to push in that direction of producing things that can be used across the board. Um, and then with that, still partnering with the CFO for the strategic financial modeling, knowing that uh, mergers were a part of the new norm for the agency. And so really looking to see how we could build that out to uh, become more robust. Um, and so that's probably a quick snapshot of on the job training outside of that. It's just the different trainings for um, in the fire service and what there is to be offered, as well as through obviously uh, college and the general stream education. In college, are you major in finance or you major, what, where, where do you go to school and and Surpri surprisingly, I'm not. I was probably a little bit more of the kid who was a, a little more of a nerd who did the Running Start program and went through college um, and got my associates. And after that, I was quickly hired on at Monroe and just continued to do stuff there and then target classes that met the needs for where I was at in my position. Well, my main interest is the cost of service. We hire uh, someone to do the study. I I see a lot of questions on that. To us, cost of service is very critical. 
for two reasons. Number one, negotiating with our contract cities and knowing exactly what our costs are. And also when we do the annexation of other city, we can really, really explaining why it costs us so whatever the cost is. So that's critical yeah. to me. Yep, yeah. that makes perfect sense. All right, thank you, welcome. Thank you. Welcome, Jennifer. Is the boot still on your desk? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, I'm sure you look forward to passing that on. And and I don't envy your role of having to squeeze as much much of the knowledge out of, uh, of DC Eastman's head. Um, but do what you can. He's got he's got a lot in there that we we would love to have uh, in other places. Oh, I'm working on it. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, Commissioners, if there's no other questions, we promised Jennifer she would have the boot for probably the least amount of time with an <laughs> IT manager on the horizon and some other uh, positions that we need to fill in, in facilities. So uh, she's going to be a short timer with the boot. But uh, with that, thank you for the opportunity to provide a fire chief report and staff would welcome any questions from the board on the previous items. Thank you, Chief. Any questions, comments for Chief? Any concerns? I see that we're, you know, we've jumped up from kind of that low of 60 into the 95s. Does it just feel like a, a general settling or you guys seeing anything that looks problematic on the rise? Well, it's a less of a steep, you know, curve up than the third and the fourth waves looking more like the third than the, the fourth, but we'll just wait and see. We lag a little bit behind the hospitals on the reportable data and testing is way down, mask use is way down. So we'll see where this goes and we'll continue to watch it in the coming weeks, but there is some concern in certain certain areas. So we'll see. Yeah, Commissioner Jam. Yeah, actually I do have a question. Uh, there, I had a different consultant saying that we should not so concerned about the cases, but more concerned about the hospital utilization, a hospital being in hospital. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I have, I heard some of my friends uh, actually have COVID, but then they got over really quickly. Is that, is that you think that's the right way to do it, not by cases? Because right now the mandate, the transportation, no mask now and all that, the judge just threw up with it out. What, what, what's the thought on that? Yeah, I think, you know, since the beginning, transmissibility and virulence has always been the issue. If we can all remember to the days when there were so many deaths in New York that they brought coolers into the parking lot of the hospitals and in Los right. Angeles, that's been the issue. So it's a lack of available hospital beds, ICU and ventilators to breathe that you know really cause the most concern for the healthcare community. And then we are impacted by that if, when it happens with wall wait times in the hospital for transport and just the, you know, what how many cases we have in our community. So Unfortunately, even Dr. Fauci hasn't figured out how to make the crystal ball on this work, and we're just really subject to what happens at our at times in our area, which might be different than other areas of the country. So, I guess we'll just continue to to wait and see. All right. Any question, other additional questions, comments for Chief for his report? All right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Moving on to item number eight, our union report with President Hoover. Good evening, commissioners, staff, and uh, public. Um, I'm here in uh, beautiful Vancouver, Washington uh, at our Washington State Council of Firefighters Educational Seminar. Uh, it is the first gathering we've had since 2019. And uh, there's a group of us down here uh, learning and, and being educated. Uh, with that, though, I would uh, like to also send our congratulations to Firefighter Siegel and his years of service to South County Fire. Uh, Mike's been a, a great uh, member of our organization and our local for many years. Um, I would like to, uh, this is going to be pretty brief, um, I'd like to just give a brief update uh, on um, how negotiations we feel have been going. It's been, we've met four or five times. They've been going well. Uh, we're making good uh, progress, good discussions. I feel like the dialogue has been excellent and we have three meetings scheduled for May. So that has, uh, that has gone well. Um, the, uh, we had a member of ours on the Mill Creek meeting today, thought that went well. I'm sure you'll get more updates on that. Um, 
So just otherwise monitoring things and uh, and seem to think that things are going well. With that, I'll close my report and take any questions. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions, comments for President Hoover? All right, thank you. Moving on to unfinished business item 9A, our board committee discussion, uh, potentially for action. And this is a continuation of our discussion the last, I believe, two meetings now uh, in regards to the uh, current setup of board committees, whether those continue on in their current form, uh, whether the board chooses to eliminate committees completely and move to uh, discussions within our work session on those specific topics related to you know, intergovernmental capital facilities and finance. And uh, this will be another opportunity for adding to that discussion. Um, so if there's anybody that wishes to start that off, make a motion, uh, feel free. Commissioner RTO Flack. Yeah, I guess since we've um, spoke about it um, considerably the past couple of meetings, um, I guess it's okay to, to make a motion and then people can kind of state their case uh, during the discussion part. But uh, yeah, make a motion to eliminate the existing committees that we have, um, of course, except like Snow and one one because that's um, not really like a, one of our internal committees. Uh, is there a second on the motion? Is that a second, Commissioner Chan? Yeah, I, I, I would like to amend it, uh, if I knew it, amend it. I think uh, we said that uh, I like the finance committee still be there. I think Commissioner Daniel also mentioned that in uh, Linwood is, um, they abandoned all, all, all the committee, but except for, for the finance committee, I think that committee need to be refocused. And also, uh, we can more able to do play what if situation. It's very difficult to do what if in, in front of everybody. And then the rumor we go here and there. So I think that's, I, I, I would like to amend that to be accept finance committee. The, don't we have to uh, second it first and then we can amend it? Because I raised my hand to second it. Okay, you second, then I amend. I, I'm raised on mandate. Commissioner Rowland, being our our okay. parliamentarian, uh, so Commissioner Tio Vlack motioned. Commissioner Lawrence did raise his hand um, to do second. So we were in discussion. So Commissioner Chan is wishing to amend the motion to retain the finance committee. And from my understanding, do we need a yes. second on the amendment? Yes. So is there a second on the amended motion? I'll go ahead and second it. All right, so there's a second on the amended motion. So the new motion on the floor is to abolish the existing committees except for the finance and the um, Stone I-1, but that's an external item. So really it's just to keep finance. Any yeah. additional? We, we'll have to vote on the amendment to see whether it passes, unless it's the whole friendly amendment thing that's in our bylaws. But I'm not familiar with the process for that. I think the maker of the motion has to accept it. So the so Commissioner T. O. Flack needs to accept the amendment, or we need to vote on the amendment, and it needs to be accepted. If he accepts it at this point before we've gone into debate, then it'll just stand with the amendment. Um, if he doesn't want to have it, then we'll have to vote for that amendment to pass. Commissioner Teofak? Yeah, I'm against the amendment, so I'd like to see a vote. So then we would, you know, so can, we have, the amendment? can we have discussion on that before we vote? Um, I'm, I'm also... I also believe that while a finance committee has an uh, important role, I do believe that as our largest and most important role on this commission is the financial health of the organization, I think it is a topic that needs to be discussed amongst all commissioners as opposed to a smaller subset. 
there's a lot of understanding and depth that's achieved through a wider discussion and the back and forth and questions. I know some things are probably a little bit more sensitive in, in asking questions in a session that um, we don't wanna freak people out by a, a simple question of, well, what if we raise taxes X or what if we did this? But to limit our discussions and the around such a serious topic, I think is hard to relay effectively to the remaining commissioners how something got to that point, the number of decisions and the number of factors that kind of came into play. I just think it's 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 one of our biggest roles, and I think we should all be involved in that uh, in those discussions. Uh, Commissioner Chan. Yeah, I when you have a committee, it does not mean that you you just completely you're constantly updating where you go ahead. I think at the beginning, I think that's in the past. That's how we have done in the past. Basically, the board basically gives some direction, parameter, uh, what what we want to do, right? That that is how you how how you do a committee, and then the committee will come back frequently, coming back to to the board and say, "This is the direction we want to go," and so that is how. Uh, what happened the, in our committee in the past is that because the committee was not transparent enough to report back to the uh, to the board, and also the whole reason that also you get again to read detail is really difficult. All seven people going to really I want to say detail is that the progress of it. I think the whole process of last year of the budgeting problem is that we have no guidance, not guiding along the way, uh, I, I would like to see uh, the staff explaining, uh, Chief Hobus, you know, uh, the, the problem is that we don't, until the last minute and then boom, then we all reject certain things and everything else in there. So I, I mean, that's maybe you should talk to the Linwood people. Why do they have a finance committee? I think that's a good, good way to, to, to see. I encourage Commissioner Lawrence. Oh. Okay, Commissioner Lawrence. Yeah, um, I don't see the finance committee as being any more important than any other committee if we are gonna have committees. Um, so I am against um, any, any addition to the amendment. I mean, any addition to the motion. Uh, we're going to do away with committees as simple as that and I also um, know that you know we from our discussion before uh, that the staff would really appreciate not having to uh, consume a lot of staff time with appointments for committees um, to to make the committee meetings and then rehash everything again at a general meeting so I am not for any committees, except for when the occasions uh, arises that we have a uh, governmental committee forum for a short period of time. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to make comment and discussion? I, I'd like to you know, repoint out that, you know, in reality, the work uh, the work that's being done is really our CFO and our chief and, and top level staff. They're taking our questions, our directions and actually doing the work. Um, we're not, this committee isn't sitting down with spreadsheets and, and hashing through numbers. It is really a, it's, it's really kind of a, a thought and belief of how the commission feels moving forward and this, the job of staff to, to take those and try to incorporate and give us a plan, give us a, a financial picture of, do we raise this? Do we change a levy? Do we, you know, how do we fund ourselves? Um, what is our current you know, capacity that we're putting into reserves? Like all of those things, we have a robust discussion and try to come up with ideas, questions that staff comes back and says, well, if we do X in five years, here's our, you know, here's our number. Um, and I think for me, I, I think that discussion really does need to happen amongst everybody. Um, 
there's just so many questions and nuances. Um, it, it would be bad if you had a subset of three asking the questions, then you come back into a committee and like, here's our financial picture and everybody starts asking the same questions that you all hashed through in order to get to that point. Uh, it's just, it's double explanation. And, and I think sometimes there's some creativity that comes from uh, everyone here in, in thinking through a process. Commissioner Rowland. Um, so it, it's my understanding, and you guys, uh, pardon my voice, I'm just getting over a cold. Um, it's my understanding that the finance committee has not met in a while. Um, uh, is there an anticipated need for it in the next few months, uh, specifically to address a, a, a specific problem? Um, uh, that might help guide this a little bit. The finance co committee was never formed previously, at least within the last number of years. It was one at the beginning of this year that was desired to be formed, uh, given that we were bringing on a new CFO and was slated to meet officially for the first time this month. So to this, to this point, nothing has happened with the finance committee. You're on mute. So if we were to vote um, and, and not have it as a committee, um, there, there's no super pressing business that has to be done right now um, that, you know, the committee needs to meet and start working on. Um, but we would have time to kind of hash it out and decide whether that's something we want to add. The only reason I'm, I'm bringing this up is because the way the bylaws are written, I mean, finance would be a standing committee and the, the bylaws say there's no standing committee. So we, we need to amend the bylaws to get you get rid of that. And at that point, um, when we do that work on the bylaws, we can look at that finance committee as being, you know, something that's a standing committee. If there is an immediate need for a specific subject, um, there's nothing that prevents us from just forming an ad hoc committee to explore the options or do some of the work so that, you know, when we come into discussion, at least some of the research has been done ahead of time. Some of the scenarios have been game planned out. I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea. Um, and, and this motion wouldn't limit us from being able to just, you know, form one for a specific purpose uh, in the future. So um, I'm not sure where I stand on it, but um, I think we, we do have flexibility no matter which way we go. Great, and, and you know, well pointed out that technically committees just in general are not authorized by the bylaws as they currently are formed. Commissioner Chan. Yeah, I, the, uh, I like the chief who was say something about this. He is the one who wanted to have the finance committee to, to give him guidance. That's a good example right now. And it's four months. I think I think this fundamental difference uh, as a commissioner, I think we should uh, give, give a general guideline, at least a parameter, how much money we should spend, not the other way around. The way that you understand is that whatever the chief do, give direction what to do, and then we said not and not. This, is, this hasn't been run of fire district one for all this time. Commissioner is the one who gives them direction, not in detail, what do we want to go? We have, we have chief come, come and go all the time. We cannot, every time the chief come in, we're shifting everything else. I think that's a fundamental difference. Uh, and also it just, to me, it's crazy. I, I just, <laughs> today I just sent an email. So I've been on Snow, Snow 91 Finance Committee all this time. That you need someone in a in very more focused way to 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 look at the finance. I I'm this crazy. I mean, I I have an old organization. They always have the finance committee to do the work, and I'm just pleading. Uh, someone else can speak up about how critical it is. It is. It's not. It's not finance more. Is more important or not? Commissioner duties have two things. Number one. The, the, the control the purse strings off of the organization and hire and fire the chief. That's a two, two simple thing. If, if we give up the finance part of it, I don't know where, 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 where we're going. Thank you. Any further discussion on the motion before we move to a vote? So all in favor wait, of the- wait, wait, wait. I, I like to hear the the chips, what, what is the opinion? I know we put him, uh, he is the one who suggested finance committee. 
Well, that was a lot of hiring and firing of the chief too in that conversation. <laughs> Don't forget about policy commissioners. That's the other one right. that uh, you have to, we, we talk about. But yeah, during the search for CFO, we talked really early with the, the commission from last year about a finance committee. And as you know, some of our contract yeah, cities have, love you. some of our contract cities have them, some uh, fire districts, regional fire authorities, you know, will have finance committee. Uh, one of the questions that I asked of the CFO candidates that came uh, to the RFA for consideration was, "Did do you have a finance committee? Have you worked with one before? As you know, uh, CFO uh, Bothwell has worked as the finance, with the finance committee in the city of Bothell. And there was a discussion last year that uh, when I asked him that question, he said he was comfortable working with the finance committee because he's done that before. If we didn't, we, I told him we didn't have one now. And he said, well, that's okay too. And I can make it work either way. So at the end of the day, this is a decision for the commissioners because as you know, this is part of the commissioner bylaws and you get to decide what this looks like. We're comfortable staff supporting a finance committee if one is formed by the commission. If there's not one formed, then we have a plan that we discussed to talk about the, the really the pillars of the foundation, which is intergovernmental and finance primarily that ties into capital facilities as well as intergovernmental. Those three pillars are interrelated. So it's up to you commissioners, which way that you'd wanna go. Um, I was not in this role when we had committees before, when we were fire district one. I participated at some level through my union involvement, but we're, we're ready to support it either way, whether you decide to have it or not. And there may be times I think that we need intergovernmental that I'm gonna ask you, be that we, I think we need an intergovernmental committee for city blank or fire district blank. There may be issues that come around that say we need to have a finance committee and I will definitely not afraid to ask the commission to do that for your consideration. Well, I, I think my, my, my difficulty is that it looked like nobody take leadership in this, in this organization because we're all looking at you to, to do whatever you do and we say yay and no, and then you putting back to us, very, very difficult. Uh, we're kind of like a, 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 sail, a boat sailing with a rudder. Uh, I just want to emphasize on that. Commissioner Lawrence. Yeah, so we've had the discussion, some of it uh, that Micah pointed out, uh, Commissioner Roland pointed out, that we got to start off with no committees. This, this is what we're voting on, right? That we're going to uh, scrap all the committees. And so we keep talking about a finance committee, but we can't have one because the bylaws uh, don't allow it. So we'd have to change the bylaws or just have an ad hoc one, like it was pointed out. So what's, 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 what are we voting on here? I'm, I'm getting really confused. Uh, I hope I don't hear about finance committee one more time. So the current motion is to eliminate committees except for uh, a finance committee. And of course, Snow 911 is not part of this. As it's not one of our committees. It's an appointment uh, to Snow 911. Oh, wait, wait. Are we eliminating committees or not? What's the, what's the motion? The, the current motion is to eliminate committees except for finance committee. That was that's the amendment. No, we 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 have we can't. That's but we're we're voting on the amendment at this point. Okay, we have this, not, but we were, we've been discussing the amendment. So okay, the, if the, this the amendment. amendment fails, then we're back to the original, okay, which is so we're voting on the amendment, pass or fail. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Anything additional, Commissioner T.O. Flack? No, yeah, just okay. to clarify, we're just voting on the amendment, not the motion. Um, the so motion. all in favor of the amended motion of eliminating committees except for the Finance Committee, say aye. Wait, no. Wait, wait, wait. We're, 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 voting, okay. we're voting on your amendment, Commissioner Chan. So okay. All in favor of the amended motion to retain the finance committee outside of eliminating all other committees, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. All, any abstentions? And the motion, the amended motion fails. So we're back to the original motion, which is to eliminate committees and move those discussions back into kind of our general work session. Is that correct, Commissioner Teofak? Yes. And any further discussion on that motion? 
Yeah. Commissioner Chan. This also happened in the past that I would like to have some kind of a, a discussion coordinator because what in the past is that we never bring, nobody bringing back the issues again and someone lead to make sure we got all the information and that just, just coordinator working uh, toward the staff because uh, a capital facility plan is a very good example. We discuss, we discuss and no, no follow up until we form a committee or follow up. So I think that will be really helpful have one person to kind of coordinate uh, the, the issues. Okay. Any further discussion before we vote on the original motion? All in favor of Commissioner Teal Flack's motion to eliminate committees, say aye. Aye. All opposed? And motion passes. Uh, six one. Um, as we're still in the committee discussion, um, I'd like to, to bring up, you know, Commissioner Rowland's pointing out that our bylaws, our bylaws seem to need uh, need some work. We we've got some items in there that do eliminate our potential for having a standing committee. Maybe that's uh, something this commissioner wants to readdress. Another is, uh, you know, talking to Commissioner Rowland, we, we've got a lot of stuff in there that is kind of not bylaws material, it's more uh, more related to code of conduct and, and other things. And I would really like to, to look at forming an ad hoc committee to uh, look at uh, and come back to the board with some bylaws changes, potentially a, a new set of bylaws in addition to potentially carving out those items that don't fit within our bylaws into a commissioner code of conduct potentially something that falls in line with the Washington Fire Commissioner Association's you know, handbook, maybe augmenting some of that material in addition to some of the materials that are in our bylaws that kind of don't fit in the, the spirit of a, a bylaws document. Um, so I'd like to, to have a discussion to, to form that ad hoc committee um, for that specific task. Any discussion for or against that notion? I know we talked a little bit about that in the past um, and chatting with Commissioner Kenny about, you know, cracking those back open and looking at them. Commissioner Lawrence? Well, I sound, that sounds like a good idea. Um, I'm not volunteering to be on the committee though. So noted. Any other discussion? Commissioner Rowland? So is, is there a motion on the floor for this or is it just pre pre motion discussion? It, it was pre motion discussion. Okay. Um, yeah. So I kind of, I think I talked to you a little bit about this earlier. Um, definitely think that this is a great idea. Um, as we know, uh, the bylaws were rewritten at a time where there was some uh, dysfunction and they were, you know, written to address specific issues that no longer really are, are applicable. Um, and I think it's a great idea for us to go through and, and try to clean them up. Um, we also saw that there was some, um, I guess, some confusion or some, some disagreement over the process of uh, how appointments are done. And, and I think that's, that's definitely something that we should codify in the bylaws so that there's no, no you know, questions about it in the future and that there's no, you know, we just, we follow our, our process. We, get a, we come up with a good process and we just follow it. Um, just so that, you know, everybody feels like, uh, you know, everything's being done above board and, and fair. Um, as part of that, uh, I would, uh, I would like to see us um, enlist the, the services of a uh, professional registered parliamentarian, um, primarily at the beginning, and then probably at the end of the process, at the beginning to kind of make sure that we're all level set on what should be and what shouldn't be in bylaws and kind of the general form and and the, the game plan, then we can go about and uh, you know make those changes. And then at the very end to come back through and kind of red team it, kind of take a look at it, make sure that we haven't you know created any holes that we aren't you know aware of um, and just make sure it's clean before before we go through and and uh, adopt something new. Um, that, that, that's kind of the plan that I would I would envision. Okay. Commissioner Chan. Well I would be careful. You guys I say something everybody will vote against what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm understanding. So are you are you suggesting that you and Commissioner Kenny 
will be on the bylaw and then we'll additional this parliamentary person uh, to to go for the ad hoc committee is that well the ad hoc could, could have up to three commissioners and you know we could hire any number of outside vendors or consultants um there'd be no restriction on that so uh, up to three three commissioners could be on that committee okay but so originally commissioner Kenny was the one who who going to review that and now i think uh commissioner Rowland is also interested so okay if, if that is a uh if that is a premises, I, I, I can agree with that. I don't, I don't want to speak for Commissioner uh, Kenny, so I'd, I'd rather him uh, speak up if he, if he wants to still be a part of it. Um, yeah, he's, he's welcome to. I just want to make sure that we're not just making assumptions or anything. Commissioner Kenny? Well, I would just offer that I think at the first meeting of the year, the board on a 3-2 vote appointed me to review the bylaws. I've been waiting for Commissioner Rowland to get up to speed and see. And then we've had kind of a discussion. Commissioner Tio Flack brought it up maybe three meetings ago about the committee issue. So I've just been kind of sitting tight, waiting. Um, <laughs> frankly, also doing my taxes, making sure my taxes got done by April 15th uh, before I uh, devoted time to um, to doing anything with the bylaws. So that's the current status of it. Uh, having um, you know, a larger committee that looked at it is probably a good thing. Having more commissioners involved and making something that can be a good uh, living document that, uh, that we have, uh, you know, everybody can, or at least most of us can feel comfortable with, uh, I think would be helpful to the operation of the board going forward. Commissioner Kenny, when that was formed, did we discuss it as an ad hoc committee or did we just was it just a hey commissioner can you go fix our you know go start looking at our bylaws uh, i think it was envisioned as an ad hoc committee but um I'm not, i don't know that that term was used at that time okay Any yeah, additional? Think, uh, oh, sorry go ahead no go ahead commissioner Rowland. um i i think by definition just because this this work would begin with you know, the bylaws and it would have a definite end date once we, you know, get the revision uh, passed. And then at that point, the bylaws committee would cease to exist. Um, you know, by nature, it is an ad hoc committee, so. Oh. And, and you know, I, to re, kind of repoint out, I, I think Commissioner Rowland's kind of pointing out that if we can solidify our bylaws to kind of their core essence um, and have that point to additional documents, whether it is, uh, you know, Code of conduct, as I know in our bylaws, there is a lot of stuff about you know how staff interacts with, or how commissioners interact amongst chair, committee, and with staff. You know some of those things could live in a, in a document outside of the bylaws themselves, but are you know essentially a companion to our bylaws, and those whatever they would be called, if they're you know code of conduct or an operating guideline, uh, whatever they would be named those would be potentially things that could be adjusted over time uh, rather than cracking open our bylaws every time we want to make you know those minor adjustments so i really like that thought process and keeps us with a, a solid uh, you know a solid structure of of our bylaws and then we can work and add with those other document documents so it seems like the committee is kind of there um it would just be a matter of uh, adding and appointing anybody uh, in addition up to a total of three commissioners that desire to be on there. So um, I, I know that Commissioner Rowland's interested. If any other commissioners are interested in participating in that riveting discussion of bylaws and par parliamentary procedures, uh, and Commissioner Rowland, if you could share with Melissa um, any potential contacts that uh, would serve as outside uh, contractors or outside consultants to assist in that process. Um, you know, I, I believe we probably have it within our budget to, uh, to, to move something like that forward and maybe we can get a, a quote and something that can be brought back to uh, be approved by the board. Yeah, I, I can point her towards the, uh, the there's a basically a, an online list in parliamentarians uh, uh, association of those registered parliamentarians. They're, they're in the register, so. Okay. Anything additional on uh, kind of committee's bylaws discussion? 
Okay, we'll move on to item uh, unfinished business 9B. Actually, you need yes. to vote for are we going to form that committee at this point? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, it was essentially already formed at the beginning of the year with okay. appointing an ad hoc committee with Commissioner Kenny. It would just be uh, appointing, you know, essentially the chair just appointing additional people to that ad hoc committee. Got it. And and I want to just see if there was an additional commission, uh, com commissioner that was interested. Um, and that doesn't have to be, you know, voted on in or addressed during the meeting. It can be done by email and adding and adding people to the committee. Um, so 9B, our board priorities, uh, funding sources for discussion. Um, this is kind of a continuation of where, where our money comes from. Uh, you know, we, we have a number of funding models and mechanisms. And I know we're looking at our upcoming budget, uh, budget schedule for our 2023 budget coming up pretty soon. It always arrives much faster. I know uh, CFO Boffwell has been working on a new calendar um, related to the budget. Um, and I know amongst this is uh, other things like, you know, our benefit charge, which is currently a six year benefit charge um, and the potential of that renewing to an additional 610 or a permanent benefit charge. We've got an EMS levy that um, you know, is out there, is degraded to a certain point, and there's the potential in the future of, of moving to repass an EMS levy, you know, a 10-year, a permanent. So there's a lot of these mechanisms that will enable us to, to move forward in this increasingly expensive region and expensive equipment, as we see with the prices of refitting ambulances, you know, seems to be going up as everything else. And I think this is just kind of an open, going to be a little bit more of an open forum to kind of have that discussion and um, see if there's any questions that anybody's got uh, for staff around these different mechanisms. Um, one, another one being bank capacity. Chief, I know that you guys are working on uh, the calendaring for the, the budget for this upcoming budget season. How far along is that? When are we looking um, potentially to, you know, have that uh, to be able to kind of see what the, the timeline is going to be? The calendar planning is, is pretty mature. We were going down a two track pathway, CFO Bothwell, to find out if the board was going to have a finance committee or not. So we were planning for May to come back and discuss that. Uh, I could let CFO Bothwell go over a little bit more in detail. We're planning tentatively come back, uh, work session in May, have those discussions. Chris, would you like to add anything else? Yeah, thank you. Um, we do have draft budget calendars and an entire budget um, process timeline out there. So as Chief said, we were just waiting on some direction about whether or not the finance committee was gonna be a thing. Um, so we can move those forward. We've talked about them internally, so we're ready to go with those and we can get those on the agenda, the next agenda that, uh, that the commissioners would like to see it on. So, um, and one of the things to your earlier point, one of the items, one of the stops along in the, in the process is going to be a revenue capacity uh, analysis that I'll present, which will tell you kind of where all the levers are that you could pull to uh, generate additional revenue and where we have capacity and where we um, are, are at our limits. Uh, and so that'll be early in the process. So we'll kind of get a, get a good understanding of where, um, how we can generate revenues to kind of keep up with inflation or to fund new things or, or how to kind of put the pieces together. Um, and so that'll be early in the process and um, it'll be primarily informational for you all. And, and of course, we're, we'll be interested in finding out what you're interested in when it comes to those various things and the revenue mix. Um, and I also think one of the things that we're, another thing we were kind of on hold with, with the committee discussion was financial policies. Uh, and so some of the revenue, the, there's, you know, uh, the policy we're going to suggest will probably have a revenue component to it. And so establishing, you know, what the revenue mix looks like um, by policy and those kinds of things will be a discussion that we're ready to tee up in the short term as well. Right. In, in all of, in bringing all of that forward, um, and we have new commissioners and some who've been here for a while and some who've just forgotten what the, you know, the percentages are. I know we have a number of, uh, of reserve accounts with balances um, and, you know, if you're able to bring forward, what is, what is the board's 
policy with each one as far as how much, like, is it a percentage? Is it a certain dollar amount that we're trying to offer? Looks like the chair uh, froze there for a second. Well, uh, he's uh, frozen. Uh, one question I have, CFO Bothwell, is um, we had talked about uh, investing uh, in fixed income securities with our kind of excess cash. And uh, do you think that you'd be able to present uh, something to us uh, next meeting? Absolutely. Um, what we can do is prepare some scenarios based on current current yields in the market, based on different um, things, the investments that would be available to us. Um, and so we can poke around and find some rates for uh, most of the pools will tell us what they're doing. And then we'll, we can look at, you know, in terms of yields right now, and then we can look at some of the um, managing our own portfolio too, and see what the yields are. It's fairly easy information for us to get at. And then we just look at our excess cash and uh, we would probably wouldn't be able to do the full cash flow analysis to figure out exactly how much excess cash we have, but we can talk in terms of if we put $10 million here, this is how much we could generate and that kind of thing, because uh, we do have pretty significant reserves. So if we, we could talk in probably 5 million increments or 10 million increments um, and get a pretty good idea of where, what we could generate um, with various options within a policy. Okay, excellent. Yeah, and for just from my opinion, I would... Um, just knowing that there's just always unknowns that you can't even plan for because it's the definition of an unknown. So just to not like push the push to get as much interest earned um, by, by still leaving cash that might not be earning the best interest rate, but it's there if something happens. Because um, like, even if we don't use the money, just knowing that it's there gives us peace of mind. I, I know that in uh, when the pandemic happened, uh, one of the concerns was are, are we going to be able to collect property taxes? Like, will people have money to pay property taxes? Um, and so, if we had money tied up um, that didn't mature in time, we would have had you know some headaches uh, there that um, we, it's best to avoid. Even though if we didn't earn a couple of thousand dollars more. Yeah, I, I can certainly appreciate that comment. And I think you're absolutely right on. There's We have a lot of options and that's what I'll kind of show you just in terms of how liquid they are too. We can go, there's you know LGAP where we can get money out overnight. Um, there's options where we need to give a couple months notice. And then there's options where we're tying up money for a couple of years. And so having a good balance, I think makes a lot of sense. So I can really appreciate that comment. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I know six month treasuries are like a good deal right now, like 1.26%, something like that, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, and uh, Vice Chair Teal Flack, until I think Chair Urban's back taking the conning commissioners just on that conversation, you know, I, I rough look at my calendar from last year, we brought on June 8th for discussion at work session for action on June 15th, the budget calendar that Kathleen had. So as we go on these, uh, these stops along the train tracks, I think that Chris referred to, we could definitely with the newer commissioners, just all commissioners where Chair Urban was going, do a refresh, talk about these other items like you talked about. Commissioner Teal for that because it's historic times for inflation. And there's some different ways to look at some things. So we're, we're happy to do that to support the board. So thank you for bringing that up. Apologies, the internet didn't seem to like what I was saying. Uh, did Commissioner Lawrence get a chance to speak yet? Oh, he had his hand up for a while. Yeah, it's been. Um, so are we moving on from that uh, discussion there? Because I have something else to talk about. Oh, let's. See if Commissioner Chan had anything left. I'll come right to you after. Commissioner Chan? Yeah, I think I just reminding people that when we had the 17% for the for reserve, it was during the during the uh, recession time. That's only dollar amount that we, we can afford. So I think we need to revisit because condition is different. It's uh, also if you go into general company, you know, 90 day cash, that is kind of one key thing to that. I think we need to revisit. Great. Anything else on kind of the financial budgetary? Okay. Commissioner Lawrence? Yes. Yeah, so, so since we're going committee lists here, I would like to discuss uh, the idea of having our work session or on the second uh, Tuesday. Just get right down to uh, business. No chief's report, no, no um, 
presentations, just get right down to uh, <clears throat> talking about things uh, that we can talk about. And yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, and I think that had got brought up as well with, you know, being without committees, you know, needing more time for each of the kind of main board priority topics uh, would be ideal. So um, I would also be in agreement that, you know, our work sessions, uh, we kind of dive straight in and have the time to dedicate 45, you know, 60 minutes to uh, maybe each of those main top three priorities that the board identified at the beginning of the year. Um, do we course, need to do we need to make that a motion uh, like right now and vote on it? No, it's that's really just kind of how the agenda gets uh, put together. Okay. And so Melissa and I will just uh, carve that committee. Okay. Commissioner Kenny. Yeah, I wanted to chime in on that vis-a-vis -vis the um, work sessions. Uh, I think it's important that there is a public comment and Local 1828 has an opportunity to say whatever they wish to the board. Those two things I think are uh, mission critical for all of our meetings. Uh, I believe we need to hear from the public at any time we meet. Uh, and I want Local 1828 to have an avenue to speak to us, even if they choose not to use it, that they know they have that standing opportunity at every board meeting. So I request those two items be on, on uh, those work session agendas. If you look historically at how they are used, there are not a lot of minutes that go into those. But if there end up being a lot of minutes that go into them, they're worthwhile. Thanks. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree. And I know there, you know, there have been changes to uh, what the governor has been putting in with OPMA, um, not having a public comment period. We just, it, it is safer to keep ourselves, uh, keep it as a standing item on the agenda. And as Commissioner Kenny pointed out, generally doesn't get used very often. So uh, should not take much from our discussion timeline. All right, um, as 804, uh, moving on to new business, our approval of work authorization agreement for the Valley Village property phase two environmental study with DC Eastman. Thank you, Chair Urban. Um, if, you, if you, the agenda bill is on page 55 of the packet. Um, the, um, the document that we're looking for the board to authorize um, Chief Ovis to sign starts on page 113 um, and goes to page 124. Um, I, I, I haven't, we haven't, we, we've been talking about this, but we haven't brought any, any real documentation forward. So part of the items that are there is we, we give you the, the phase one report, which is, is what kind of, what kind of drove us to needing to do the phase two. Um, you've got a, a letter of interest extension letter that gives us the first right of refusal, um, on the value, um, village property. Um, it's extended to the 30th of June of 2022. Um, we talked about last week that we um, executed the interagency agreement between South County um, and the Department of Ecology. And then the last piece <clears throat> is the work order authorization. And this is with the, the consultant, um, um, Maul Foster, um, same consulting group that did phase one. Um, and this is, to auth this is the agreement between us and the consultant um, for the work to be done. This document actually informed the interagency agreement um, that we did with Ecology and for everybody. Um, we've got funding came from the EPA through Ecology to us. Um, and how the process works is we'll pay, we, we end up paying the, the consultant to do work. We submit that for reimbursement from Ecology back to us. So there is a funding mechanism for this um, right now it's at hundred thousand um, dollars, and the current work order is not to exceed hundred thousand um, dollars. And so, what the request tonight is is to authorize Chief um, to sign this agreement. And based on um, district policy, um, with consultants, any consultant work that's over seventy-five thousand needs to come before the board for approval. Um, this document was reviewed. Um, we, and edits were suggested by legal counsel, which were accepted by the consultants. So, um, we're in a place for, um, the last piece for us to be able to start doing the work, um, on the phase two environmental is this document. And so staff would, um, at the end of the discussion would request, um, authorization for chief to sign. 
Thank with you, that, Eastman. I'll take any questions. Any questions for Chief Eastman? Commissioner Teal Flack? Just to clarify, and Chief Eastman may have mentioned this, um, but we'd be refunded the, or essentially we wouldn't be paying for the, the cost of this? The, the, the funding for this project will come from EPA through Ecology, but the way the mechanism works is, is I'm assuming we, the way it's set up is the, cons the consultants would, would submit the invoice to us, then we would, and I'd, I'll work with the CFO to have that process work. And then we, we're submitting monthly with Ecology to get reimbursed. And so there's a pro there's actually a process to do that to submit, then it's got to go through their process. So there's a slight delay um, from the time we get the invoice. And so the way I envision it working um, is that we'll get the invoice from Mall Foster, we'll submit the document, submit the payments to um, the consultant, and then get reimbursed um, from Ecology um, for the work that they did. So there is a funding stream for it. It's going to be exactly how it works and the way it's set up. I, I think um, I owe um, the CFO some additional information so he knows um, how they want to set it up um, to track, to ensure that the dollars that we're spending out, we're getting reimbursed for and all that. But there is a 100% funding for this. It's, it's, there's no match, it's 100%. Chief, um, so in the interlocal with Verdant, we've got an extension to June 30th. Looking at the deliverables, um, we potentially have a draft phase two report by June 30th, uh, but not the, the final not being received or not be done till mid August. Um, how do we, you know, what's our anticipation of having to go back to Verdant to extend that again, or will the draft suffice enough to, to give us that cover? What's so what's the in plan talking to Matt and, and Megan from, from Mall Foster, is I think we will have, um, unless they find something unexpected, um, I, I believe we'll have um, in the draft appropriate information needed um, um, to inform, you know, a, a process moving forward to purchase the property. Um, if for some reason we find something that's that's um, you know, that we need to actually wait till the middle of August. We've been, we've been keeping um, the Verdant team up to speed on everything we've got going. Um, they get an update um, on progress just to ensure this is moving forward um, for them to keep their board appraised. So um, I, I'm hoping that we have enough information to inform the RFA um, on the property. And, um, you know, if there's, any, if there's any challenges with development, we'll have a good idea what those are. Um, we can have a conversation then about are we going to move forward with purchasing? If we are going to move forward with purchasing, we can take that draft and have that inform our position on the purchasing um, documentation and stuff that goes along with it. And, and um, Rich's office has been been working with us through this. And Holly, um, one of the one of the attorneys um, in Rich's office, um, does only environmental law for his office. So we've got um, an expert that that everybody that we're working with knows well. So. Um, I'm hoping we get to a place where we'll know enough um, to make a decision, at least, are we going to move forward? Are we not? And then I think it um, will give us enough information, I'm hoping, um, for us to start that process um, as far as moving forward to purchase the property if we choose to go there. And so, you know, if they pull this, you know, the, the prelim report, they might get just says, oh, it was gasoline or it's toxic sludge. Um, giving us a chance to to pull back or pull out if something is found and and it helps us to it, it forms on oh this is going to be a half a million dollar cleanup or something to that point is that you know is that a new renegotiation with Verdant on the price or is that you know I, I think that helps inform us in that conversation we haven't had that conversation with with actual negotiating anything. We, we, we know that as a result of having our conversation with Verdant, they can't sell the property less than 90% of, of appraised value based on three different appraisals. We know what the statute requires it to do. Um, mm -hmm. In the scenario you're talking about, Chair, I, I think um, there's ways that we can move forward on the purchase if we identify the fact that there's 
a certain amount of cleaning that needs to be done as a as a result of developing the property um, that can weigh into that conversation um, if we move forward. And and there's ways that that can be done. I've had those conversations with legal. Um, uh, and there's there's multitude of ways you can you can hold back a certain amount of the purchase price. You can you can write in that you're going to reduce the purchase price x amount. Um, you can write a, a purchase agreement where they the they're still responsible for the cleanup, even though, right? I mean, there's lots of ways to skin that um, yeah. cat if we choose to go down that path once we know. But I think um, I think the, the risk is low just based on all the development that's happened there, based on the, on the conversations we've had with Ecology and the, and the current consulting group. Um, and just for the, so the board knows is that um, Ecology has been really good partners for us. And we're also laying the groundwork and some of the things we're doing sets us up where if there is a need to clean something up and and there's always local cleanup that needs to be done with the tank even if there's not a huge cleanup there's always local cleanup that needs to be done um there's funding out there for that purpose um specifically and so just to keep the board you know up to speed on everything we're working on we're also making sure that we're in line if we get to a place where there's certain cleanup not i'm not talking has you know has cleanup site that's registered with the feds but um, that there's 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 funding for that and ecology is a very good friend um, um, in doing that work for us so we're working down that path too okay i wonder if the guy who originally buried this tank knew how much trouble he was going to cause in the future commissioner chan yeah if no other question i'd like to make a motion to authorize the fire chief to sign the, the manual foster and alonji incorporated work order authorization we have a second on the motion. Commissioner Daniels, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on to committee updates. Um, 11A, no intergovernmental committee meetings since our last and now kind of moot. Was there any capital facilities committee meetings between last committee and this or last meeting in this one? Nope, no meetings and no meetings to come. Commissioner Chan, Snow 911. Yeah, I, I just sent an email. I was not able to attend the meeting, but uh, Chief Hovitz will be the alternate voting. And then um, you enter in the afternoon, uh, Commissioner Daniel should be, uh, should be, uh, the caucuses will be elected him and he will join the finance committee. Like it or not, he is in the committee. All right. Okay. Chief. Uh, commissioners, I'd like to say thank you. I know we don't have committees at this point going forward, but I'd like to thank former uh, commissioner Bob Metter, who was the subcommittee chair on the intergovernmental committee as well as uh, Commissioner Urban and Commissioner Teofilak. I'd also like to thank uh, the committee chair, uh, Commissioner Kenny, for capital facilities plan work and getting us to the uh, conclusion of phase two, but also Commissioner Lawrence and former Commissioner Burnett for their participation as well. And I'd like to thank Commissioner Chan for his service with Snow Nanner One and Director Mills didn't get as much time at our last meeting when we had executive session a few meetings ago. Uh, we were in exec for a while, but he wanted me to relay on behalf of himself and Snow 91 staff. Thank you for your work at uh, as a voting member of Snow 91, as well as your service in the finance committee and helping with the transition of Snowpack and Snowcom uh, for their merger. And uh, appreciated being your wingman or vice versa during that time frame. I learned a lot from from you, and uh, I'll continue that good work along with uh, Commissioner Daniels. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Moving on to the commissioner comments. Any commissioners wishing to make comment? All right. Well, item 13, adjournments. Um, we'll see you back here on our, I believe it's May 3rd, regular session. Um, hopefully we, we have a good results with our April 26th uh, annexation vote for Mill Creek. And I'm sure chief and staff will keep us updated by email and through uh, media releases on the progress of that. So thank you guys for all of the hard work on, on that and see you at the next meeting.
Sige. Bye.